Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. It's not every day we get to tear down a fluke multimeter. But yes, we've got one, the new CNX 3000. And it's wireless. So we've got all the wireless attachments. We've got five items. Can you believe it? Oh, you know what we say here on the EEV blog. Don't turn it on. Take it apart. And here it is in its nice little padded bag. We've got the Fluke CNX 3000 meter. We've got the CNX i3000 uh, wireless flex current clamp. We've got the CNX uh, A3000 wireless AC clamp. And you guessed it, they keep calling them the 3000. Urgh. Get out of here. Tight fit. We've got the uh, CNX T3000, which is a K-type thermocouple temperature wireless adapter and we've got the CNX V3000 which is a wireless AC voltage that's all it does it just measures AC voltage and we've got all the bits and bobs as well including this uh, flexible current clamp how do you do it there we go it just pops out like that goes in there you lock it and that's actually a current clamp up to uh, that's the I2500-10 2500 amps so whew, we're going to attempt to uh, tear down well, we can't tear down this. This is actually molded sealed. So let's tear down these and see what we've got. A new fluke. Beauty. And here it is, the CNX 3000 wireless multimeter. Check it out. It's got a dot matrix display. I won't turn it on because that's not in the spirit of uh, tear down Tuesday. But there it is. Ta-da! It's got the big new fluke button on it for the wireless button. But apart from that, it's kind of like the equivalent of the fluke uh, 70 series really so it's effectively like a wireless um, 70 series that's what they want uh, you to think anyway like instead of buying just a regular um, you know fluke 70 series electrical multimeter eh, for a bit more you buy one of these instead and if you want then you can buy all the wireless accessories later that's their plan anyway i think so let's take a look at it it's uh, changed a little bit this won't be a review of course i don't like that tilting bail there that's a bit of a eh. and once again that just uh that does actually uh break off can actually break that off it's got a magnetic uh hanger as you saw hanging around my neck at the start of the video all of these have uh magnetic hangers on them and uh, a couple of screws in there they're probably self tappers again but uh we'll find out and let's have a look inside the battery compartment oh look at that oh Look at that, it just like rises up. Watch this. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. And that just pops out there and three AA batteries. But what's missing here? Fuse access. Ah, oh, fail. They've put some uh, little spongy stuff. It's not actually rubber. It's, uh, you know, it's just like foam uh, stuff around the outside of that. So that's what gave it that little oop, hydraulic uh, lift thing that's just to keep out uh, dust and crap out of this thing but there you go looks like the uh, I do like these the um, um, uh, battery contacts there are soldered directly down onto the board you can see that in there so let's whip it apart and have a look yes it does feel uh, real nice and solid like a proper fluke should so no worries there at all folks they usually don't disappoint on that front so whip these out these feel like self tappers to me yeah self tappers they're real yep the uh yep the classic fluke self tapper the same design as all their other ones so they haven't haven't decided to change that at all interesting to see i mean this is a cat uh, four rated 600 volt cat 4 so i'd expect to see some decent uh, input protection circuitry decent clearance maybe a blast shield or two and a uh, lots of big mov protection all the usual jazz of course the two hrc fuses they'll all be in there and uh, not much else probably powered by an msp 430 again would be my guess like they do on the uh, other flukes so why not so let's try and get this sucker apart i hate that you have to take off six self-tapping screws just to change the fuses that's just you know that's really not on 
um, they should have designed that uh, bigger. You know, they could have had two fuses across there, they could have designed a bigger battery compartment. Uh, Bob's your uncle maybe had the batteries across that way, so he didn't need as much height. I don't know, they could have done it if they really wanted to. But hey, ta-da, there we go. It's not much doing, there's no internal uh, shielding on the back side of the case there. So, it's all on the board, look at that. Not much at all, but hey, you don't need much in a modern fluke multimeter. And of course, there's one thing I uh, forgot to mention on the front of this thing, it does milliamps only. There's no microamps, of course, it's not designed as an electronics art multimeter, so that's fair enough, but there's no 10 amp range at all. It's just milliamps. That's it, 400 milliamps max. There's probably a couple of ranges in there, you know, 440, 400 or something, but, ah oh man, come on. So the input front end here isn't very exciting at all. Yeah, we've got the usual uh, 440 milliamp uh, HRC fuse here. We've got uh, the input thermistor. We've got the input protection resistor. We've got our uh, fixed current shunt there because, well, you don't need a 10 amp and multiple uh, current shunts to be switched into place. Um, and we've got our three MOVs there. And, well, that's all there is to it. It's pretty boring, actually. We've got a... Uh, little um, isolation shield there, which is a little bit of a blast shield, I guess you could call it, from the thermistor here, and but it's just, you know, so it doesn't get uh, bent over onto the precision high value resistor in there. There it is, metal shielded, of course, um, to help get the noise down, but yeah, that's about it. We've got, that's probably the, uh, that might be the wireless under there. We've got that under the under a shielded can. We might be able to get a look at that later. I don't know. There's some circuitry around here. Obviously that's connected into the battery there. We've got a little uh, uh, polyfuse there and we've got a DC to DC converter just around there and some regulation there by the looks of it. So that's all pretty standard. And up here we've got a little module which looks like it's in a socket. We'll take a look at that in a minute. That's just wiggling around there. I don't, I don't like that at all. That thing could vibrate out of there. Not too happy. Um, hey, no surprises. MSP 430 uh, processor there. We've got our big buzzer there. We've got a uh, secret cow button. Looks like there's a little cow pad uh, there. Did I? Was there a matching uh, button on the back? Little secret button there. No, that. No, there's nothing there. So, yep. <laughs> I don't know why they've done that as like a button uh, type pad there. But anyway, um, there's the. Um, in circuit uh, programming, uh, JTAG port there for the MSP430. We've got this going off here, it's probably for the uh, backlight, and then uh, this going off to the LCD display by the looks of it. And really, there is not much in there at all. As I said, I do not like this module one bit. Look, it's just sitting there. You could just wiggle that back and forth, that would easily vibrate loose. Trust me, I'm not putting much forcing that at all. What's, but anyway, um, there we go. There's our um, little uh, antenna down there and uh, that is our uh, wireless module inside that can. Looks like we can't get that off unless we uh, desolder the can there. Yeah, I don't know what type of connector that is. Um, I don't know. I, it's probably not a custom. Maybe it's a, uh, you know, it is uh, designed for something else. But if anyone knows what that connector is, let us know. So if that other little plug-in module was our uh, wireless interface, what's going on under that can down in there with that uh, QFN package? I'm not sure, maybe the uh, true RMS converter or something? I can see a couple of uh, large SMD caps under there, but in the input jacks there, absolutely nothing uh, special at all, but there's uh, nothing wrong with them. They're not quite as rugged as the uh, other, uh, some other fluke meters, but uh, yeah, they're not too bad there. Of course, everything's just beautifully sold and they're really, you heard that one go crack, I'm assuming. And uh, I don't see a shake proof washer under there though, but uh, that is pretty darn good. They go in there nice and solid. Well, that, that is wiggling, is that me wiggling the unit or is that, yeah, that's me wiggling the whole thing. There you go, they're pretty good. We can see down inside the jack there, they're all nice and solid. No problems whatsoever, not the crap uh, split type. Good solid input jacks. And just as an aside, you can see the solid metal 
uh, molded in threaded insert in there. Very nice for the input jack. I like it. Now you'll notice something here, small attention to detail they've paid in the design aspect of this thing. Here's the common terminal, here's the milliamps terminal over here, and this is the voltage terminal. Now the voltage terminal is the only one that has this raised bit of plastic around it. Now that is not uh, for support or uh, anything else, it's actually a little arc shield between the pointy, you know, the sharp points of the metal contact down there and the fuse here. So there you go, they've just put a little bit of attention to detail, they've gone, aha, we can have potentially, there's that air gap there, it's quite significant, but it's a potential arcing point. So we'll just put in that little bit of extra plastic around there just for the sharp corners, because uh, primarily um, sharp corners are where um, arcs are going to, uh, high voltage arcs are going to appear from, and they can just, uh, you know, kill that by just raising that plastic there. It doesn't cost them anything, but you've got to think about that at the design stage. And it's not just uh, that either. They actually back it up with, check it out, a matching one in here as well. That uh, <laughs> They've got that shield there and that one. So really, um, you know, this is why it's Cat4 rated because there's no way it's going to arc from that jack in there over to that uh, fuse holder in here. It's just not going to happen. And you'll notice some other uh, design and build quality things here. They've also got these shields that just hold in place around the mounting posts down there. They've got them on uh, those sides of the unit. So when you put this in here like this, you put it in there like that, it fits over that mounting post and just provides a more rigid, uh, you know, less uh, movement room so that when the thing gets shocked, it, uh, you know, and the case maybe gets uh, uh, warped a little bit, it's, you know, it, that mounting post just isn't going to break off. And the mounting post is molded, integrated with the side of the case there, and it's, you know, it really is quite solid. They've, uh, you know, the mechanical person who's, uh, who's designed that really knows what they're doing. I really like it. And there's the wireless module there, and of course it's a, a uh, Zigbee uh, type. It uses the Zigbee uh, hardware layer, but it does use a proprietary uh, Fluke protocol layer called the FWCS. So uh, they don't um, plan on opening uh, that up, but they say it's not very difficult if you want to, uh, if you did want to tap into it or uh, something like that. So there's our little uh, surface mount Zigbee antenna there, and it's all under the shield, and that is bummer soldered down. Well, I've got a soldering iron, and there's no huge surprises there. It's an off-the-shelf Texas Instruments CC2530F128, and that is a uh, Zigbee control uh, chipset. It's actually an 8051 uh, process, 128K of flash, and all sorts of paraphernalia built in. We'll take a look at the block diagram in a second, but you can see the uh, they've got an oscillator there. It's probably uh, 32 uh, megahertz oscillator. Is that another... Uh, crystal there, possibly, for real-time clock. And up here we've got our programming interface, so you could just uh, solder a connector directly onto that and uh, hack this thing if you uh, were really that way inclined. But uh, apart from that, there's not much else on there. And there you go, there's the 32 megahertz crystal oscillator. And there's the other crystal there, and it's got 24324 marked on it. And uh, I entirely expected that to be a 32.768 kilohertz watch crystal there, but um, it maybe it is, and it's just uh, marked differently. I mean, there's 3-2 there, so I don't know. Um, I think it's probably got to be. And here's the block diagram for this thing. As you can see, it's got pretty much everything but the kitchen sink. We've got reset, watchdog timer, two oscillators, uh, marks and calibration, on-chip uh, voltage regulator, uh, brownout, we've got sleep timers, power management, a memory memory arbitrator, an 8051 CPU core, 8 kilobytes of SRAM, 100, this one has 128k of uh, flash, and we've got interrupt control, there's a fairly powerful DMA in there, there's an analog comparator, there's an op amp, there's a 12-bit uh, Delta Sigma ADC, it's got AES encryption and decryption. Um, I don't think this thing uses the encryption at all. I think it is uh, sent as plain text, so I, uh, you know, so you should be able to read it. If you can intercept it, you can probably uh, read the data. It's got the radio registers, uh, CSMA, all that sort of stuff, radio interface, 
uh, demodulator, ADC, receive chain, the frequency synthesizer, the transmit, the modulator. Oh, it's all there, FIFO and all the frame control to handle all that, plus a couple of UARTs thrown in, a couple of four timers in there, and whoa, Bob's your uncle. And these little surface mount crystal packages seem to be all the rage these days. I, I rather like them actually, they're quite neat. And here we go, we've got the board out, got a bit more circuitry on the back, which we'll take a look at. And uh, here's the LCD, and interestingly, the LCD just sits in there, like that. And it's just uh, pushed in place, held in place with that foam back in. That's very unfluke like um, You know, I would have expected to see that on cheaper meters. I don't know why they've decided to uh, do that. But anyway, they have. It's a um, LCDs manufactured from uh, Handtronics. They're a, a large... Uh, manufacturer of uh, reputable manufacturer of LCD displays. Hello, I can see myself. Hello. And there we go, it's a uh, chip on board. You can see the, you can probably see the little chip in there. There we go, it's all potted up in there, but that's a this is a dot matrix uh, display. Of course, I'm not sure of the exact resolution on it, but uh, there you go. We've got a huge uh, even backlight on the back of that thing, so I'd expect that to be nice and even, but uh, apart from that there we go, we'll take a look, got a bit more circuitry on the boards up here. And uh, standard fluke uh, rain switch by the looks of it. If we take a look down here, there it is, standard fare. They haven't, uh, they haven't rocked the boat there at all. It's exactly the same as uh, the mechanism they've been using for a long time. Not a problem. So let's take a look at the boards. And of course we find our standard uh, diode bridge plus one extra diode in there for our uh, fuse protection as well when the fuse blows and they've used some large uh, MELF resistors there the old MELF package I do like the MELF package and uh, they've used that to get uh, high voltage of course they've uh, put them in series there there's where that uh, uh, blast shield goes around there like that we've got a guard ring going around that that's our um, thick film uh, hybrid resistor network on the top that's also uh, shielded but apart from that it's not much else on here there's a couple of little uh, components around, a couple of LEDs. You'll notice that, uh, note the uh, soft button up there. Check that out. They've just uh, put the LED directly in the middle, which of course uh, lights up through the uh, rubber, uh, through the clear rubber uh, button on there. But they've got still got the same uh, dual, like, you know, similar sort of uh, pattern on there, serpentine pattern that uh, allows them to detect the carbonized rubber on either side, which presses down and presses the button. But apart from that, it's boring, folks. Sorry, there's nothing under the rubber at all. And this thing hasn't been released very long, but check it out. They're up to Rev 8. There's another guard ring up there. Don't know what that's guarding, but uh, something under that can. Hmm. And there we go. I've lifted up another shield, and it's the LTFLK2. It's a fluke uh, custom special under there so that would be doing uh, the you know the input uh, switching and uh, probably uh, some true RMS stuff as well and on the bottom of the range switch there very nice uh, dual wipe contacts not a problem and um, looks like a very good quality gold plating on there on the board as you'd expect I'm sure it's very thick so there you have it that's inside the fluke cnx 3000 and it's a classic excellent uh, fluke design and build quality, I uh, rather like it. And in interestingly, um, if you remember my uh, Fluke uh, 28 Series 2, um, these inductors here seem to be a uh, weak point in the design in terms of uh, uh, shock, because that inductor actually broke uh, twice on me, very similar inductor, because ferrite is quite uh, brittle. So, you know, in terms of uh, shock, you know, that's probably one of the uh, first things to go, actually, surprisingly. Um, would be that ferrite inductor there as you can and if you haven't seen it does uh, see my flute 28 uh, Torture video where I take it through a canyon and drop it and do all sorts of things. Yeah, that sucker broke twice So there you go. But anyway thumbs up. That is a uh, superb classic Fluke build quality can't be beat and yes folks it does work when we turn it back on Ta-da! There it is with its uh, dot matrix display mm, Not too happy with that, but yeah, anyway, so this is the CNX A3000 wireless clamp meter, uh, 400 amps, uh, Cat 3, 600 volts, Cat 4, 300 volt rated, of course, classic, uh, you know, clamp configuration like that. We'll get in there, you can have a look at the uh, laminated 
cores inside there. So we'll crack this open. And by the way, um, yeah, these things do have data logging. And the data logging is done, if you're curious, is done internally to all of these remote units. The uh, CNX3000 multimeter itself does not have logging capability. It just acts as a star net, uh, the, uh, the star controller for the wireless network. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, the multimeter itself, no data logging. But these things do have data logging built in. So let's check it out. And uh, we'll open this up here. Battery compartment. Ta-da, two double A's. Nothing very exciting there. Three screws, and we'll lift this sucker right out. There you go, you can see the uh, laminated core right down inside the clamp there. And that goes all the way, there's uh, multiple laminations in there on both sides, and that goes all the way around to the sensor, which will be in the uh, main unit itself. Aha, look. There we go, we have the same module. Again, we've got a matching module. We won't have to take that apart again, I'm sure. Look at that. Quite nice uh, build quality there, I like it. And that's a real nice big spring clamp mechanism. I don't think that's gonna fail anytime soon. And yeah, I have no doubt that modules are absolutely identical. Um, it, you know, might have some uh, firmware differences, of course, because this isn't the uh, star hub controller or something, or maybe it is identical. Uh, firmware, I don't know, but yeah, um, I'm not going to take the uh, can off that. That'll be absolutely identical. Same connector system. And as with the uh, CNX meter itself and all uh, fluke meters, uh, lovely deep ridges on the case there that go around inside there just in case there is any uh, arc over or anything like that. It's not going to blow your hand off. It's going to be uh, any explosion is going to be pretty well contained inside the case. Now, sorry folks, but I don't seem to be able to prise these two halves apart here. Maybe they're uh, glued or uh, thermally bonded or something like that after manufacture. I mean, you know, it, it wouldn't surprise me. In fact, I'd uh, expect them to be uh, uh, fused together somehow. So, sorry, um, I'm not going to be able to show you the uh, hall sensor in there. Bummer. Ah, actually, sorry, that's not going to be a hall sensor because uh, this is not a DC uh, current clamp, it's uh, AC only, so that's just going to be a uh, current transformer in there, not a uh, hall effect type. But that's a uh, fairly high quality uh, construction here, really. It should be fairly reliable. They've got a th uh, threaded metal insert down in there, nice big uh, solid uh, threaded screw, which you know holds the main uh, pivot point for the main clamp down there. So it should be uh, really rugged and last uh, quite some time. And we've found the memory there. It's an Atmel 25DF081, and that's an 8 megabit uh, flash memory, but it's very low voltage. It's a 1.65 volt um, interface there. So looks like we have a bunch of uh, test points there. They're maybe for production or, uh, so, or uh, programming, something like that. I don't know. Um, soldering, of course, absolutely first class. Maybe we've got some sort of uh, amplifier or something there, perhaps. Um, but there's, yeah, there's not much on here. Um, some more uh, test pads down there, but there's not much on the top side here at all. So uh, we've got to find the processor probably on the bottom side. And that chip there's got uh, 25 Ti AFB on it. So I'm not uh, entirely sure what that uh, sucker is. Um, it looks like it's, you know, it looks like some sort of uh, regulator or uh, something like that, based on the huge uh, uh, tracks coming out of it, and well, relatively huge, and the uh, caps as well, huge big ceramic cap there. I've got a tantalum on the input, so yeah, that's probably some sort of uh, regulator. So let's uh, pop this thing over and uh, see if we can look at the processor on the bottom. And there's the big fluke button on the uh, front there, and can see it uh, lights up of course there's there's the LED in the center of it and then they've got uh, no less than uh, four pads there so that's going to be a pretty reliable uh, switch on that sucker and there's the input there from the sensor and uh, you can see a uh, resettable poly switch fuse there not much else some analog uh, stuff probably got some uh, amplifiers in there and uh, couple of miscellaneous components but it looks like um, the LCD is uh, got a uh, zebra strip in it and uh, we're gonna have to 
take out that, it's going to have the processor underneath the LCD because there's nothing else on this board at all. What's an Argent A? No idea. And there's the LCD with the uh, zebra stripes on it. Nothing much doing there. And if we have a look under the main board here, we can see the uh, LED backlight on the thing. You can see the uh, two LEDs up the top there. There they are. And yep, you guessed it. TI MSP 430 yet again. Eh. And here you go. You can see that uh, light pipe backlight there. The light enters along this edge here and then it curves into there. And of course they've got uh, reflective uh, strips along the outside there which helps contain the light in the middle. And then it's uh, emitted um, evenly, spread, should be spread fairly evenly. This little bit of rubber up under there, when you put those together, it somehow holds that module in place, like puts pressure on it. I wonder if the uh, CNX3000 uh, did that. Oh, I won't take it apart again. I'll have to review my uh, photos or video footage. And sorry, folks, that's all she wrote on that. Nothing much more interesting to show you, I'm afraid. Next. And if you want to see the screen on that, turn it on. It tells you it's the A3000. And, eh, not much doing. Next up, the CNX V3000 wireless AC voltage. That's all it does, folks, is uh, measure AC voltage. Cat 3, Cat 4, 600 volts. Oh, that looks really nice and rugged. I like it. Um, yeah, they've all got these, uh, bat these uh, magnetic um, hangers on them, of course. Really super strong, and it latches onto the battery there. It's curious to note that on the clamp meter, they actually use one of these uh, latching retaining hooks for the battery. Uh, compartment, but on this one, eh, old-fashioned screw. Go figure. But it is at least metal threaded insert, so let's, uh, how do you, go? how do you pop that open? Well, that's a bit, that's a bit silly. There we go, two AA batteries and four screws. I think this sucker's just gonna pop open. It's almost begging to be opened. Ta-da! And there we go. Ah, looks, here we go. We've got, of course, we've got the same module again, and yeah, look, we've got a little retaining. That's that. That's actually rubber. There you go. That's actually a rubber insert. There's the uh, metal plate in there for the uh, for the magnet uh, system to retain against, and that's a little rubber molded rubber thing which then holds that module in place. All right, so we have our Zigbee module there. We have another. Uh, uh, DC to DC converter with the inductor there. We have, there's a little poly switch down in there. Under there we have exactly the same uh, custom Fluke uh, chipset as we saw in the uh, multimeter. Got the uh, programming header interface there. We've got the LCD on top once again. I, it's almost as if like you don't have to take it, not pointless taking the thing uh, apart actually. You, go, you know it's going to be the same under there. There's going to be an MSP430 uh, processor and that's all she wrote. On the input uh, side here, check this out. Of course, this is uh, different because they've got like a different uh, um, input connector uh, form factor, but this looks really solid. I like this, you know, big solid molded connection on there for the uh, for those uh, banana jacks. And really there's, um, you know, and they've bolted it directly onto the board there uh, with these two screws. And they've got one MELF resistor there. You'll notice that there's no uh, mobs on this thing at all which is uh, quite surprising, always, unless they're on the uh, other side. But uh, I don't see any through-hole uh, pads for the mobs at all. So there you go. All they've got is this uh, MELF input protection resistor here. They've got an input uh, cap and then uh, AC coupling cap. And then they've just got uh, the hybrid uh, thick film uh, resistor divider network. And that's, um, that's pretty much all she wrote. I mean, but this thing doesn't have to do any uh, range switching or anything I don't think. Um, well, a couple of lower ranges from the divider, but that's it. I mean, so really it's just fixed functionality, but I did uh, expect to see at least some mobs in there. So I don't know, um, Fluke know what they're doing on the input protection uh, side of things. This is uh, Cat 4 600 volt uh, rated. So I guess they've determined uh, that due to the limited functionality in this thing, they simply don't need input mob protection.
Now this is a bit fascinating, check it out. Here's the positive input uh, jack here, and it just goes through that MELF resistor on the top in series with the MELF resistor, goes through that uh, via, and then on a center layer around this cutout here, which has this uh, rather large uh, uh, shield on it. Look, they've actually put like a blast shield around there, which then goes in the middle of the board, so they're almost like, that's like a fusible track or something. So on gross overload conditions, that's designed to uh, uh, break, I'm assuming. Then there's the uh, AC input coupling cap, of course, and straight into the divider. And, re you know, really, that's all she wrote. And then they've got an inductor down here on the uh, surface mount inductor on the negative line. But that's rather fascinating. There you go. Um, that's all you need for a, um, a fixed AC measurement. Uh, you know, effectively like a multimeter input uh, that only does um, high voltage AC. But once again, folks, as you'd expect, very rugged, very rigid, well-designed case. I mean, even that half of the case, if I try and flex it like that, it's very strong, very rugged. I really like it. They've done the same uh, thing around here with the post. Look at that. They've embedded them in there. So, and then this is directly molded into the top side of that there, very strong, very rigid. That's why when you put these together like this and they go in there and you know, and you try and twist these things, you just cannot, you know, there's no giving these, they're super strong, super rugged. I really love the design of this thing and that input jack there, fully molded into the bottom of that. Look at that, there's huge big uh, threaded metal inserts into that, massive. I really like it solid, lasts you a lifetime. And yeah, I'm not going to bother with the LCD. I did have a uh, quick look under it, exactly the same, MSP430 as before. So next, let's switch that one on as well. That's the V3000, look like a U, but that's all they could do there. There you go, terribly exciting, volts AC. It's got a log button, it's got a RF uh, a Zigbee connect button and a backlight and uh, really, that's all there is to it. It's not that even, actually. You can see the hot spots on the LED there. So, yeah, that, uh, that uh, light pipe, it works okay, but, geez, it's not as good as some meters, that's for sure. And I'm telling you, I really like these things. They're just built so solid and tough. You can throw them in the toolbox, and, oh, they're built like the proverbial brick dunny. Love it. And by the way, it doesn't actually say where they're made, but I assume that they're made in uh, the Everett uh, plant in Washington. But yeah, I don't know. They don't actually say uh, made in China. So with Fluke, you've got to assume that it's uh, USA, but I'd be stamping made in the United States of America. Uncle Sam approved. Next up, the CNX i3000 wireless iFlex. That was that funny looking uh, flex uh, current uh, clamp. Well, it's not a clamp, it's a uh, flexible interface and as you can see they've got like a custom uh, interface it looks like they've got three connections there but it's actually not this one over here is just a dummy one and they actually use both of these so i'm not sure why they've decided to do that you can see that this maybe you can't see down there but that one's just a dummy um, the two contacts are actually there and there so i'm not sure why they decide on that crazy well once again this will be very quick folks not much to write about at all um, They've done, it looks like they've used, uh, have they used like the same case down here? They may have with the same uh, cutout there, but the two two connections are over this side now. So they may have used the same uh, mold in there. Interestingly, there's a cap missing there, which, uh, and they've actually um, put paste on the pads, which, uh, you know, you don't normally uh, find. There's another unpopulated one up there. It's got some paste on there, but yeah, nothing much happening. They've used the uh, two, uh, Terminal screw interface here looks like there's a looks like there's a poly fuse there and well not much else Is that an amp? We'll have to take a look at that. That chip there looks like an analog device is uh, OP1966 But uh, I can't find the info on that anywhere. And they've got the uh, poly switch there for the battery contacts and there's the uh, AT mega uh, SPI flash again and we've got our Zigbee module and a bunch of other analogy type stuff. Um, yeah, not that exciting. Sorry, I'm not going to go into detail. It's like 
yeah, whatever. I don't even think I'll take the rest of the board out because, well, we know what's on the back of it. But that is basically the uh, input circuitry pretty much there for that uh, clamp system. Well, the um, for that uh, flexi sort of current clamp system up to 4,000 amps. Oh, excitement plus here, folks. There it is, the i3000. Woohoo! Last but not least, we have the CNX T3000 wireless K-type thermometer. There you go. Standard uh, K-type thermocouple input, 30 volts max. Not terribly exciting. Crack it open. Expect to see oh, exactly the same stuff. Now this one's a bit more interesting. We've got a bit more uh, input circuitry down in here up the top exactly the same you know we've got it's the same molding same casing everything works and same as before for the other modules but uh, down here we have a uh, thick film hybrid there there it is there's the uh, no there's a um, linear technology part there we'll take a look at another uh, QFN package there and down in there looks interesting it's all like uh, gunked up but that's the uh, input connector Let's take a look. And there's an LT6010 there, uh, precision op amp, designed for, well, surprise, surprise, uh, thermocouples, you know, low input uh, bias current, you know, 100 uh, picoamps or something like that. So pretty schmicko little part. And there's that LTFLK2 Fluke custom chipset again. It pops up all over the place. So apart from that, we've got, uh, there's the uh, two input uh, pads down in there you can see they're huge and chunky check those out oh enormous they've got two inductors uh leading from them you know totally differential look you can see the uh two inductors there you can see the uh cap across both from two more inductors so we've got input filter in there and that all goes into uh some uh precision resistors there and that's measured by the uh lt fluke and so I'm not sure what the uh, precision op amp all the way up there is doing. If it's look like it's not like near the input to the uh, uh, thermocouple down here, but this could be just a switching uh, chipset or something like that. Could just be switching it through and then it uh, goes into the 6010 up there. Who knows? Um, not sure. We've got a couple of uh, uh, five and six pin SOT 23s and. Uh, that's all she wrote. So let's see if we can get that board out at least. Now you can see the um, input jacks down in there. They're actually a spring terminal. And those spring contact inputs, of course, uh, contact these two large studs here, which are actually press fitted into the board, down, uh, press fitted and uh, soldered into the board down here like that. And you can see the massive uh, traces up there. I don't, you know, they're not doing it for the uh, current. They're doing it for uh, thermal reasons, I can only assume. And there you go, RT1. There's a thermistor in there which measures the temperature directly at those two input contacts. So they're obviously trying to compensate for um, any effects due to the uh, metal, any thermal effects due to the metal contacts right down at the input. They've gone to a lot of trouble to do that. Fantastic. Because of course, what is a thermocouple? It's just uh, a contact with two dissimilar metals. And there's the uh, thermocouple probe right there. And uh, really, um, that's effectively a similar thing which is going to happen or could potentially happen on your input jacks here. If you have dissimilar metals, um, it can generate a voltage and that uh, changes with temperature. So you've got to be very careful. So they've added the extra thermistor in there. So I'm not actually sure what uh, metal they've actually used in here, but they've determined that it's going to have a uh, enough effect that they have to measure the temperature at that point and potentially uh, compensate for it. So, wow, that is, that's really quite interesting. I like that. And I was going to say, maybe that's what that 6010 is doing there it's actually reading that individual channel there but yeah i can't really seem to see where it goes it seems to go into this uh, resistor network down in here so that's just a compensation uh, network or something i'm not sure if they actually uh, separately measure that into the analog uh, to digital converter and then uh, uh, do something in software with that or whether or not that's just it it looks like it just may actually be you know um compensating in an analog uh, fashion but uh, yeah not entirely sure. Well, this module is, um, you know, rated 
at like uh, half a degree uh, absolute uh, accuracy and uh, 0.1 degree resolution uh, Celsius, of course, and 0.01% full scale uh, uh, temperature coefficient per degree C. So, you know, it's a reasonably high spec uh, temperature module, that's for sure. And we'll switch that one on for fun. T3000. Sounds like Terminator. 24.9 degrees here in the lab. There it is. Not terribly exciting. So there you have it. That's the Fluke CNX 3000 wireless multimeter series. Very, very funky. Um, yeah, haven't used them yet. So I can't give you a review on these things yet. But uh, yeah, very interesting. Very well built, uh, as you'd expect from Fluke. Absolutely first class and uh, worth every cent, I'm sure. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to discuss it, jump on over to the EV blog forum. Catch you next time. That hurts. Oh. Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. Oh, I didn't hook up the bloody mic. Oh. Dickhead.